Hey y'all, good morning, good afternoon from wherever you're tuning in from. Welcome to this talk today for working with point groups for new users in Civil 3D. So really geared towards those EITs, you guys coming out of school, need to learn how to use the program. So this is one of the, you know, one of the first things you're doing when you're when you're working in Civil. You're, you, you, got, you got some points and then you're bringing them in and you're trying to create an EG surface uh, from those points. And let's talk about how those surfaces are defined and what sets things up for best practices when you, you know, when you get down the road a little bit working in that file. So let's go ahead and let's jump into Civil and uh, let's talk about points, point groups, surface definitions, all that. All right, so Civil 3D here, 2022. This is a age old thing, so it's not gonna be version specific or anything like that. This is, you know, any version of Civil is gonna, gonna work the same way. So let's go ahead and let's bring some points in and let's just see how this works. So insert tab, I'm bringing in, bringing in, bringing in data and we're gonna go points on file right here. And we're gonna go ahead and grab this plus button here to import our points. And I'm gonna grab this EG1 text file. I'm just gonna open it up real quick and we're gonna take a look at it. So really simple, four points. I'm gonna make a, it's gonna make a square in our file. So northing, easting, and varying of 100 feet and no elevation set to it. So it's gonna be a flat planar surface. So let's go ahead and let's just grab this EG1 right here, say open. And first thing, just pay attention. What's the format that the files are in? So is it a ENZ, NEZ, PENZD, all that. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this down at the bottom here, PNEZD. You notice my point format matches up. So number, northing, easting, no elevations, and no descriptions tied to this. So let's go ahead and let's talk about this, this button right here. This is your friend. So this is a two-step process. And what this does is this segregates the points when they're imported in into a specific point group. So first button enables it, and then this little button over here is where you create that point group. So let's go ahead and let's just select this right here. And let's just call this topo, for example. And we'll say, okay, we have our topo point group, and we'll say, okay. Our four points come in, notice we have our point group right here, topo created, and then we have this all points point group right here. So let's say we want to go ahead and create a surface here. Surface, right click, create a surface. We'll just name it whatever it is. And let's go ahead and let's just add in our point groups under the definition here. So point groups, right click, add. And this is where things can be a little bit of a hiccup. So you, if you add in the all points point group defining service, any import of points that you bring in so you say you have another endpoint of some other points, maybe they're not tied to this, it will be defined to that surface. So let's go ahead and let's just grab our topo and we'll say apply and okay. And now I have my surface created defined from those four points. Now let's say we want to import more points in. Say this is, in this scenario, let's say it is part of our surface. So let's go to insert tab, points from file again. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this other text file, this EG2 right here. I'm going to go ahead and open it. And so just notice this is points numbers 5, 6, 7, 8 with varying northing, easting. And they don't also notice this time they have an elevation of 10 feet tied to them. I'm going to go ahead and close this. We're going to grab EG2. We're going to grab our format, PNEZD. Just do a quick check in the preview. We like what we see. Now we're going to add this to the points group. So in this case, I'm going to add it to my topo points group. And we will see that when you add it in, it is going to update the surface accordingly. So we add it and we say, okay. Notice my surface here is now out of date. We have that home plate symbol. That means that we, there's been some changes to it and it needs to rebuild. So I'm going to grab my surface here, right click, and do rebuild. And then notice now we have contours defined in our surface. And the reason for this is, it, is if, if I go to the surface one right here, we go to our surface properties. In definition tab, we can see that this is defined by the point group topo. So the topo point group is what's defining the surface. Now, if I go into my topo here, we can see that now I have eight points, one through eight. Those two point, uh, those two point file imports are part of that point group. So this is, you know, this is, this this could be a good way you want to work. Now, keep in mind there can be there's a couple of hiccups that can happen if things are defined incorrectly or you're not quite sure how things are defined or things like that. So let's take a look at this one scenario. I'm just going to delete everything out now. And notice my topo point group is still there. And if I go into this point group, just notice 
point groups. If I go in, you can see include. It has these numbers in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and just, I'm just going to delete this out. Say apply. Okay. Properties. So this is that topo point group. It's created in the file. There's nothing tied to it right now. So point groups, raw description, include, exclude, all that jazz. So let's say, for example, we have in, let's say, for example, we go ahead and grab this button here include all points in this topo point group. So that means when I import my points in, they're gonna be included in here. But keep in mind, this is gonna include everything. So let's take a look. Say apply, let me say okay. Nothing's changed, we don't have any points in this file. So let's go ahead and bring some in again. Points from file, we're gonna bring that eg1 in. eg1, say apply, okay. Go ahead and grab the point format. I'm gonna add them to the topo point group. Right here, we'll say okay. They've been added to my topo point group. It's as expected. Things are working. Okay, cool. We go ahead and grab a surface. Let's create, let's create a surface now. Just leave it all as is. Let's define it with that topo point group. Point groups, right click add, call it topo, apply. Okay. Okay. Surface created. Same thing that happened. Now let's say we import more points. And when we import those points, we don't want them, we, we don't want these points to be part of the surface definition. And so what we're gonna see here is we, we, we kind of bunged things up a bit and we're gonna see how that happened. So we have our surface, we're happy with it. Say we have another point import, whatever that may be, but it's not part of this surface, so to speak. We don't want it to be a part of the surface. So I'm gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go to points from file here and I'm gonna grab that EG2. Right here, just like you. And we'll go ahead and grab the format. This is those points with that 10 foot elevation. Now let's say we were to just use a standard practice of checking this add points to point group box, and we're gonna create a new point group. And we'll maybe we'll call this, maybe sometimes, maybe we'll just date it, 10, 14, 2022, something. We're just calling this something separate. So we'll call this point group and we'll say okay. So those points are gonna be added into that point group. That's what we would expect. So we'll say, okay, and we'll bring them in. All right, so notice we have those four points in there. Everything's looking good for our price. Everything looks good, so we have those four points. But notice if I zoom in now, this topo point group has a home plate on it. And the reason for that is it's how we defined this topo point group. So our point groups, notice in our include, we have the all points, or we had it checked, but that is this right here, all points greater than zero are gonna be included. So let's go ahead and let's just refresh this. We'll say apply and okay. And notice the point group says, oh yeah, see those points now. And then notice our surfaces going down the tree also need to be rebuilt. And what we're gonna see here is these four points are now gonna be added to the surface. So we right click rebuild, and now we have those contours again. And this, is, this, pretending this is a scenario where we didn't want this to happen, it all happened upstream because that topo point groups had all points included with it. So good, good practice is just pay attention to how you're defining your points. What point groups are they a part of? Are we including all points? Are we not including all points? And what point groups are being used to define the surface downstream? So if you have all points defining your surface, every single import is going to include that in your surface, which could be which could be what you want. It could also be a disaster where you see your surface triangulation just jump off or jump in weird directions. And that's because some errant points or some points that shouldn't have been used to define the surface are now a part of it. So hopefully this helps understanding how this works and working with point groups, how they define that surface and what is being created from afterwards. So thank you for the time and uh, have a great rest of your week.